What's up, motherfuckers? Drew's back with some more goddamn metal for your asses, and this time we have a hugely underrated and underappreciated speed metal slash thrash band, whatever you want to call them. And I've been kicking myself in the ass for not including this band in my six essential thrash metal albums list from a year or so ago, because this band is one of my personal favorite speed metal bands of all fucking time. The mighty goddamn Whiplash. That's right, this is the Roadrunner Years uh, triple pack that uh, has the first three albums from the band. It includes the band's first three albums, and honestly, it's all you really need, and we're going to get into why. There are a few other tracks here and there on the other albums, but this is everything you need from the band. And this is the only way to get the CDs nowadays, unless you can find old copies of them. To my understanding, because I've tried for years to find the individual CDs, and I can never find them. And I stumbled across this Roadrunner pack that's the first three albums. It's really all you need. I think I got this thing for like 35 bucks or something, and uh, have, ha hasn't let me down yet. Now let's start with Whiplash. Whiplash are from New Jersey, formed in 1984. They released a few demos in 84 and 85, but in 1986 they made one of the greatest speed metal albums in the history of the goddamn genre. Power and Pain, sported on this goddamn t-shirt right here. Dude, this album has all the speed, the grit and the fucking riffs, dudes, that you could ever want in a thrash album. This is top line speed metal. If I were to list off killer tracks, I could just give you the album's entire track listing. But for me, the best half of the album is actually the back half, with absolute bangers like my personal favorite, Warmonger, the incredibly catchy Power Thrashing Death, Spit on Your Grave, and Nailed to the Cross. If you like speed, you like aggression, you like riffs, and you like some grit in your speed metal vocals, which for me is a goddamn must. Look no further than Whiplash's masterpiece, Power and Pain. The very next year, Whiplash released a follow-up album titled Ticket to Mayhem, which, though is a slight step down from the incredibly high bar set by its predecessor, it's another goddamn banger of a speed metal album. With tracks like The Ferocious Walk the Plank, The Banger Drowning in Torment, and The Fucking Epic Burning of Atlanta. Ticket to Mayhem is just another classic 80s speed metal album that just doesn't get the respect that I think it justly deserves. Side B doesn't let up either with tracks like Snake Pit and Respect the Death, but again, we have a slight step down from that fucking amazing starter album, Power and Pain. In 1989, the band released their third album titled Insult to Injury, which I do like the album and I think it's ludicrous to hear Thrasher saying shit like it sucks or Oh, I remember that thing, it was a piece of shit. It's definitely a step down both musically and especially vocally from the last two albums, though. For some damn reason, and I would love to hear a good reason why, I've never read it anywhere, I've never heard it in an interview or anything, Tony Portaro, who up to this point had handled all the guitar work and the vocals, only performs the axe slinging on this thing, and the band hired a vocalist, which I don't hate the guy's voice, but it doesn't have that spit-in-your-face grit and aggression that the previous albums have. This sounds to me like a decision that was probably made by a record label or something to drop in a, like a pretty boy style vocalist into this aggressive speed metal meat grinder. And the whole album as, as overall just suffers for it, in my opinion. Still tracks like Hiroshima, Rape of the Mind, and Battle Scars are actually tracks that I do enjoy. It's just, again, a step down. I, I just imagine this album sounding so much better if Tony Portaro had stuck to the vocal duties. Aside from the vocals, though, the album is musically a bit lacking in what the previous albums had as well. Uh, but that relentless, catchy, speed metal riffing, it's, it's still there, like, in smaller doses. So the album doesn't suck, it just, it does have its moments, but in comparison to the first two albums, I would definitely say this is the weakest link of the three. In fact, shortly after this album was released, Whiplash split up. So this, I guess you could say, is the album that broke the band up. And it wasn't until the mid-1990s when the band regrouped, this time with another hired vocalist, and now an added second guitarist. In 1996, the band released their fourth album titled Cult of One, that honestly isn't even worth mentioning, in my opinion. At least not in comparison to the previous albums we just discussed. Cult of One sounds like a generic 90s hard rock album that's influenced, no doubt, by the booming alternative and grunge music that was popular in the mid-90s. Still, it's not a horrible album for what it is. If you want to hear Whiplash playing music that sounds like a mixture of Crowbar and Soundgarden, then have at it. But I'm all about that goddamn speed metal, motherfuckers, and that's what I want. So Cult of One is not for me. 
The following year, in 1997, the band released their fifth album titled Sit, Stand, Kneel, and Pray, which included yet another hired vocalist, and they got rid of that second guitar player as well. But still, just nothing special. It's not an unlistenable album, but more of the same vibe as Cult of One. Uh, mainstream hard rock, more maybe in the style of like Alice in Chains, and way less in the style of Venom and Slayer. And still, I don't hate it. Like, I can listen to stuff like that. I do like some of the Alice in Chains shit from that era. Uh, and some of the other music that was going around in the mid-90s. It's just, that's a style of music that I can listen to, and I'm like, oh, okay. But it's not anything that I just, like, I want to hear speed metal, man. I want to hear something that kicks my fucking ass. And that's what the band started on. And to see a band go from that to kind of like a mid-level, third-rate Alice in Chains is actually kind of heartbreaking. So like I say, I still do like some of the Alice in Chains stuff and some of the shit from that era, but I don't go to my favorite speed metal bands for it. Kick my ass with relentless speed, goddammit, and that's what they used to do, and they kind of watered it all down. Again, the mid-90s curse for killer fucking speed metal bands continues. Well, the following year in 1998, the band heard my future cries as they reformed, and it is up to, it's, I did that, goddammit. And they reformed with the original, what I call the Triple Tony lineup that Power and Pain had. And they released their sixth studio album titled Thrashback. Which, in my opinion, is hands down the best album from the band since the original three albums. With Tony Portaro back on guitar and vocal duties, the field is right back where it was in the late 1980s. With tracks like Stab and Thrash Till Death, the band had reignited some of that speed metal fuse. But again, it's not as good as Power and Pain. It's not as good as Ticket to Mayhem. At best, it's maybe on par with Insult to Injury, but I would still say Insult to Injury is probably a slightly better album. Just saying. Whiplash wouldn't release their seventh album for another 11 years. 2009 saw the release of Unborn Again, which is the band's most recent album. And again, it's not unlistenable. It's just very forgettable. You don't need it. Like I've said a million times, what is so often the case with bands is that the early material is usually the best shit. But not always. It's not always the case. I mean, hell, look at Judas Priest, look at Motorhead. Those debut albums weren't nearly as good as what followed. But still, most bands tend to do their best shit at the start when they're still hungry, they're still passionate, they're trying to make a name for themselves. So you're not really missing anything if you don't listen to Unborn Again. Kind of my rough take on that. So that is a just rough overview of Whiplash's entire career to date. The band's still together, the band still plays shows, they still tour. And unfortunately, I've yet to see them live, but given a chance, I'm going to jump on that shit in a goddamn heartbeat. It's another bucket list band for me because those early records, especially those first two albums, are just kick-ass classic fucking speed metal records. And while it's been 14 years since the band put out an album, I don't feel like they really need to put out an album. Some bands kind of, they already kind of made their statement, and I just don't really think I need more of it. Now, would I welcome it? Sure. I'm totally down to hear new material from any band that I like. But if your best albums are your first three albums that were released back in the 1980s, and you put out four albums after that that are at best mid, at worst horrible, I'm not going to lose sleep in anticipation for new material. I guess that's what I'm saying. But anyways, dudes, that is my goddamn review of the classic speed metal band Whiplash. That's their entire career. I'm a fan for sure, and if you have not spun that early material, especially Power and Pain, get off your ass. Get Master of Puppets out of your fucking CD player. Because I'm sure you're probably listening to it for like the goddamn 9,000th time. Blast some fucking whiplash. Broaden your horizons a little bit. Because this band, in their prime, kicked fucking ass, dude. I would put that up there with Rain and Blood. Uh, you put it up there with Ride the Lightning. Uh, Power and Pain is just an incredible album. The, 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 the speed, the grit, the ferociousness of it. The whole overall atmosphere, and I also love when bands just kind of attack music with a meat and potatoes approach. Of just like, you know, we don't have a bunch of other bullshit going on. It sounds like three fucking guys just kicking ass in a studio. And that makes for some great goddamn music. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, help the channel grow by clicking that like button. If you love the kind of shit that I do here, some of these reviews and some of these other off-the-cuff rants that I do, be sure to subscribe to the channel because there is more coming. I have passed 800 subs. I want to thank everybody for that. That's really cool. I like seeing the channel grow. I like seeing that I'm going in a decent direction. And also, drop some comments uh, down below and let me know what kind of content you would like to see me do. What would you like to see me maybe review? 
some shit you want to talk, maybe you fucking hate me. And just drop it in the comments, I don't care. I'd print me some t-shirts just like fucking South Park and that goddamn Tally character. Hey kids, do you love Tally? Buy the Tally t-shirt. Then the next commercial is like, hey kids, do you hate Tally? Buy the I hate Tally t-shirt. Basically what they're saying is I don't give a fuck. It helps the algorithm grow, goddammit. Until the next one, keep it heavy and keep it goddamn mean. Later.